All right. Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. And I'm Heidi Garvin from Grow, Nebraska. I'm our program services coordinator. And I just kind of like to go around, uh, since we don't have too many uh, to go through, if we could do some quick introductions. Uh, if you could say who you are, uh, who you're with, and what you're hoping to learn today, that'd be awesome. So Sammy, we'll start with you. I'm Sammy Johnson. We're with Exceptional Prince, and we're just kind of seeing what our competition's like. <laughs> awesome. And let's see, Pat, you're on the line, right? Yes, I'm Pat Lancher, and I'm with the Fillmore County Development Corporation, and we always do a um, membership investor campaign uh, in December, so I was hoping maybe to get a few new ideas and then also just to market to our businesses so that we know they know that we can provide some services for them. Perfect. And Jessica, you're on the line? Hey, my name is Jessica, and I work at NeighborWorks Northeast Nebraska. We provide um, home buyer assistance and education services, um, and I'm kind of part of the marketing team over here. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And I think I heard somebody else chime in. Did Crystal else Powers in? joined in. Hey, Crystal, how are you doing? Good. I missed Good. what we were supposed to introduce. We're just introducing who we are, who we're with, and uh, what we're hoping to learn today. Sure. I work, uh, um, well, we're in the process of starting up uh, Darby Springs Farm, and we are, we direct market patties, dairy, and chicken products. And I'm hoping to kind of, we're just getting ready to kind of expansions and the products we're offering and so wanting to learn some tips for how to best get the word out. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I'd like to welcome you all to our October 3rd Thursday training on Printing for Success. We are excited to have Judy Peterson from Pro Printing and Graphics with us today. And before we get started, I do want to say thank you. These trainings are free. We have them every month. They are open to the public, and we would not be able to keep them free and open to the public without the help of our sponsors. So this month's sponsor is um, BW Telecom. So they've been serving uh, several communities in southwest Nebraska since about 1944. And they offer a wide range of telecommunications, internet, cable, television, computer services. And they are entirely focused on helping keep you connected to your community. So one of the things that they do is they sponsor great training opportunities like these uh, to help make, well, to help make the community as vibrant as possible. So a big shout out, a big thank you to BW Telecom. And now I get to introduce our speaker, Judy. Uh, did everybody get the email that I sent out this morning that has her handouts in it? Yes, I did. This is Pat. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, Judy, I'll let you kind of take it away. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Heidi, and thank you to everyone who joined in today, um, and thank you to BW Telecom. That's great that they are willing to do this because that's true. The stronger we all are, the, the more we can help each other. So I just want to talk a little bit today about um, marketing, and sometimes I think, oh, gosh, why am I spending money on marketing? And then I notice that Coca-Cola still is and Bank of America still is, and and I think really that is, um, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that if we didn't need to keep the customers um, coming in the door and reaching out to our customers. So that's really, um, you know, why we, why we want to do marketing. And I think the main thing that we need to do when we're getting started is to look at what is our plan. Um, how are we going to reach people? Um, what's that going to cost? What are our different ways that we can can do that? Um, your you know your promotion and reach. There's so many different events and and things that you can be a part of, and and we can we'll talk a little bit more about sponsorships and things later. 
but that's definitely one thing to include in your plan is what what are you going to um, what what are you promoting who are you promoting it to and what are some ways that you can do that um, um, through through events and through volunteer opportunities then you have your online and digital your website your social media email marketing all of those things are are important now as well um, and then just regular advertising, whether it's billboard, radio, TV, uh, direct mailings, um, newspaper, or other publications where you might run, run ads. So all of those things are things to take into consideration when you're looking at developing your marketing plan. You really want to look at what are your goals. Um, you know, what do you want to accomplish? Um, you know, do you want to drive sales? Um, you know, we all want to have more sales. We all want to have more customers. Um, but really, what are your your specific goals, and and how are you going to measure those? So you look at um, you know your finances. Uh, what are your sales projections? What could your marketing budget be at that point? Are you going to look at that as be a percentage of your sales? They recommend anywhere from two to ten percent. That varies by industry, so you know you really, really just kind of need to at what what you can actually do and how you're going to to reach those people. Um, you want to know your competition. Um, I heard Sammy on from Exceptional Print. You really want to know your competition. You want to know um, who's in your market. Uh, and what what are they doing? And are they things that um, you want to try doing, or um, you know, does that really not fit you know specific to your demographic? And then you really need to know who is your current customer, and not just by name, but um, although that's important, but we really want to know um, are they. 30 to 50 year old women are they millennials um, who is our customer because that is definitely going to drive how um, how how you want to set up your your marketing plan because different demographics respond to different um, types of media so w once you know your customer who you want to target um, who your competition is um, then you know then you get to your goals. So what have you done in the past? I think it's always good to look at what your marketing has been in the past. Did, did what you do, did it work? Um, did, it, did it not work? What, what about it was successful? Um, how much did it cost to gain that success? You know, make sure you review all of those things really carefully. And then look at your current branding. Do you need to make an update to... Um, to your logo, or has something changed in your address or phone number or website, or you know, do you still have old information out, out, and you know, do you want, do you need to make a change in in your branding? Um, if you're starting out with branding, um, you know, again, it kind of goes back to what is your company and who do you want to reach. So a lot of that will help drive your branding. So once you kind of have have looked at some of those things. You set your your short term and your long term goals. Then it's um, what is the level of involvement. Um, as a small business owner, we all have so many things on our plate. Or if you're involved with um, a nonprofit, um, any of those, you know, we just have a lot of things on our plate anymore. Not gone is the day when when everybody has a lot of employees and you know there's some days there's not much to do we're all just really busy and so are you going to be the one doing the marketing and um, if you are not do you have staff that has time who's going to be involved or are you going to hire someone from the outside um, an outside company or firm or individual who's going to help assist you with getting your marketing in place and then and then doing, um, doing those things and being consistent. Um, you know, again, you're going to look at um, what was successful and what wasn't successful. And if it wasn't successful, why wasn't it? Um, did you have the wrong demographic? Maybe 
you were trying to, um, to relate to millennials and you put an ad in the newspaper. And that's probably not going to work. It may not have been your promotion. That may have been just fine. But it was the, the method which you chose to, to put something out there for your demographic. So always make sure that you look at what did work and what didn't work. And is there a way to change up those things that didn't work and still, still use that concept or that idea? Um, you know, I have um, for years belonged to um, a peer group of printers, and that has been really helpful. So if there are um, peer group associations or things within your um, industry, you know, I would suggest that you check with, you know, check at belonging to something like that. It's always very good to know what others are doing. Um, my peer group happens to be people from across the nation. And if we were next door to each other, we would be competitors, and it would be harder to share best practices. But since we aren't, you know, we feel open to share our, our best practices, our successes and failures. So don't hesitate to look for those types of things in your own industry so that you don't have to, um, that you, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, but you can know what works for someone else and try that yourself. Really, um, the basics, you know, are, are needed for just about everybody. You know, your business card, your flyers or brochures, but definitely a business card. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to matter who I, uh, who I go and, and call on or who may come to see me or who I see out in an event. Um, I always want to have my business card available, and I always want to ask someone else for their business card. So regardless of what, what industry they may be in or whether I just want to have their contact information for maybe a volunteer type thing, I just think it's important that, that everyone always has a, a business card. Um, and then think about how your, your message is. And are you consistent within you know, what you have on your business card, your, maybe your window signage or your social media? Always make sure that everything's consistent and that becomes recognizable. Make sure your colors are consistent and your font is the same so that everything about that stays recognizable. So when someone sees that quick, they're going to immediately think, oh, I know who that is. That, you know, that's for printing. That, that's my business. And then when you kind of get into some additional, um, you know, promotion and reach type items, um, if you're looking at doing some special offer, specials or offers, you know, determine should you. I have a client that I work with, and he has an automotive um, service business. And so when he decides if he's going to do a promotion, he really looks at his budget. Because if he offers a discount off of an oil change or he maybe discounts tires or something like that, he needs to look at his budget. He's hoping to gain additional customers, which will help his revenue. But um, if he's, uh, he's also going to be then giving up a portion of that sale. So with any type of special or offer, you know, you really want to make sure that that that's a budgeted thing and that you can kind of project how that was going to impact your your bottom line. Um, watching for unique opportunities, um, and sometimes they're even not so unique. It's you know, if it's a holiday, maybe it's a special event in your community. Those are easy things to tag along with, and um, it's a natural then for people, and they kind of expect that businesses will have special things around special things going on. In the in the North Platte community, in the summer in June, we have Nebraska Land Days. There's a lot of different things that the North Platte businesses will connect to Nebraska Land Days. So watch for those opportunities in your, in, in your community and, um, and see what things you might be able to tag along with. And then if you're looking at starting a loyalty program, I know that's really popular right now that a lot of people are doing a rewards type program, maybe a rewards card or... Um, if you shop a certain amount, you spend a certain amount, you get um, maybe a discount or you get 
five dollars off or or something like that. So I did a little bit of research um, on that just because I think it is where a lot of people are are trending now, and it, really to get some success out of that, um, it's it's good to add something to it. You know, integrate a loyalty into that experience. Starbucks is a really good example of this. Uh, if if you go to Starbucks all the time, you know you can do the mobile, um, the integrated payments, the mobile payments. Um, you know you get information from them, you get an email from them of, you know what you have available on your points and and all of that. So they have technology a, a, associated with that, so that makes it really easy then for people to know where they are to to um, to use them. And it keeps it in their mind. Um, you know, uh, Target has their red card, and so you get a five percent. You know, at the point of sale, if you're using their discount program. And so, if you can find ways that you can integrate um, something beyond just, you know, the punch card, make it convenient. Amazon, I think, has done a tremendous job with their Prime. I don't know who doesn't have Prime and um, and you tend to maybe order more because there's Prime and you don't have to pay shipping. Um, I think that's been a huge thing for them. Um, and so there's just different ways that you can um, integrate that into more of a loyalty type situation instead of just, you know, we're all carrying around eight or ten reward, um, rewards cards. So um, again, think about that. If you're thinking about a loyalty program, kind of look and see what some of those really successful programs are doing and how you might, uh, you know, tag, tag on to those ideas. Um, email, um, you know, email marketing, I do I happen to work with um, Constant Contact. Um, I'm a trainer for them as well, and, and I, I believe in that product. We see results with that um, immediately. Um, and then sometimes it might be a month later and someone will say, Hey, I've kept this email because I've been wanting to call you, and you know I, I saw this newsletter, and I really want to ask you about this product. Um, we do vehicle wraps, and and I will have customers who will hang on to those, and then call me and say, okay, I, I finally got my trailer, you know I'm ready to move forward. I want you to talk to me more about this. I saw on your e your e blast that you did this. So it's um it's. There are other providers, obviously, than Constant Contact, but I have had really good good luck with them, and I do like the service that they offer. But if you set something like that up, you know, make sure that you um, look at your list, um, build your list from your current customers, ask people when they come into your place of business if they'd like to be added, uh, put something out on Facebook to be added to the email list to get newsletters and specials and and educational tips and things, um, and then and then create a, the. You can make that list be as specific as you want. You can set up different folders. Uh, for me, I have a lot of different towns that we work with, communities, and so I have my list set up as different those different communities. So if I want to have a special, or I'm you know we're going to be doing something in the area of that community, then I can just choose to send the e blast out to to that community. That way, if I'm, um, you know, in the Broken Bow area, I'm not sending an e-blast to North Platte people because you don't want to have people look at an email and say, you know what, everything Pro Printing sends out doesn't have anything to do with me. So you want to make sure that what you are sending out to people really relates to the audience that you're sending it to. Uh, and then, you know, if you are doing direct mail, again, that's Still, direct mail is still the highest, um, have the highest success rate for ways to connect with your audience. Um, make sure that your message is very clear. Set up ways to measure the results, and you can do that with direct mail. So set, set up the ways to measure your results so you know what worked, if it hit your target audience. Um, there's all kinds of really cool ways now to do direct mail with variable data print and and um, you know, really targeting that market. So again, it goes back to knowing your customer, knowing their age, uh, sex, all of that, and then you can get your direct mail piece 
very targeted, so it will connect with those those people that you're sending it to and those people who are your customer, are your demographic, or are your potential customer that you want to gain. If, if you do attend trade shows, events, sponsorships, um, you know, look and see what trade shows are in your area. This definitely has to be a budgeted item. Um, can you be out of the office a day or two? Um, what's going to be your method of follow-up for the trade shows? You know, what's the cost to be there? Um, it's a little bit difficult if you aren't really structured in how you're going to follow up with any of your leads. You may end up being really frustrated. But trade shows are a great way to um, to do uh, prospecting and kind of see what people are reacting to and and what they um, what they want from your product. Give you instant feedback on what they what they think of of your product and. Um, so, again, make sure that you have all the things that, that you need and have budgeted all of those things as well as don't forget about your time. Um, if you're going to do an event, maybe there's something going on in your community and you can and can be part of that event. Um, look at is that event going to be something that your target mar market attends? Is that going to to actually get gain you... Um, what you're looking for, because anything, even if it's just your time, that, that still has an expense to it. Um, Heidi, I should have asked you earlier, but are people able to ask questions, or do you want to do that at the end? I should probably make sure I'm unmuted. Uh, if anybody who has questions, feel free to chime in. Okay. All right. So, and we do have that list of questions that were submitted beforehand, too. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, with your customers, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Um, if you were looking for a product that that you offer, um, what would you want to see, and what would you how how would you react to to that? So that helps with kind of knowing your customer. If you think, um, okay, if I'm if I'm going to do social media. Um, what would I want to know? Am I going to want to know more education about this topic? Um, you know, with the development corporation that's, that's on with Pat, you know, what am I going to want to know out of from them? And so if you kind of think like your customer, your client and consumer, what, what are they going to want to know from you? And then how much time are they going to spend looking for that information? Uh, how easy can we make it for them to find all of the information that they're needing? And and a lot of that is going to go back to um, are you open when people need to, to connect with you? Um, is your website, is it easy to access? Is it easy to get around? Is it easy to find where? You know, I've actually been on websites where I can't find the phone number. And, and yet... Yeah, there's a, you know, contact us and you can submit that and you can wait days to hear back maybe. But, you know, make sure that it is very, very easy for everyone to get in touch with you however they need to do that. Because it's too easy to find the next business that may do something similar to what you do. And, again, if you're targeting millennials or you're targeting a certain demographic, you know, make sure that that's the type of, of media that you've chosen, that it's one that they're going to be familiar with and they are going to be on and and they're, they're going to be able to, to reach out to you quickly. Who don't already have a website, I, I think everybody assumes now that everyone has a website. It used to be, oh, that's really cool if somebody had a website. Now it's pretty much just assumed that everyone is going to have a website. So. Make sure your website is consistent with your brand, showcases what you have to offer, and customers can find you. <coughs> Excuse me. And then take it seriously. Um, if you're going to have a website, make sure you keep it updated. Um, don't don't um, have your you know cousin's brother-in-law set it up and then never look at it again. Um, you want to make sure that 
that the information is correct. You want to make sure that you um, update it frequently. <coughs> Excuse me. And you want to make sure... <coughs> Sorry, I got a frog in my throat here. <coughs> you want to make sure that your... your um, <coughs> and, <coughs> Excuse me. to make sure that you're reading your analytics. Um, that you are checking to see who's coming on your site and what they're looking at when they're there, what pages they're going to, and how long they stay on those pages. So always make sure that you look at that, the analytics. Um, there's something, uh, you probably all have done it, but make sure you've claimed your Google Place page. I do still see businesses who have not done that. So make sure you do that. And then look at all of your social media that you might have or anywhere that your company information is online. Make sure it's consistent. If you have Yelp, if, if you have YouTube, Twitter, any of those, make sure that all of that information is always current. If you change the hours of your business or anything like that, make sure that that, that information changes. Um, one thing that we have struggled with is Google has us down the road about half a mile. And so every once in a while, we have to go back on and update where our location <coughs> is. And so don't, don't just take it for granted that always going to be correct because sometimes it isn't. So make sure that you continue to look at your brand, keep your brand consistent, keep your information consistent. So again, people can find you just as easy as they possibly can. When you're looking at your analytics um, for your website or your social media, what are people like? What are they responding to? What aren't they responding to? and make those adjustments constantly within what your plan is. If you do decide to move into the social media marketing world, if you're not already there, um, make sure that you just start with one thing that you know you can do well and have your plan in place, know what you want to say to your customers, and then make sure that you're consistent in your posting and and that you do that one really well. Don't get caught up in thinking you've got to be on everything and the latest thing that comes out, you have to do that. It's really better to start with one and do that really well. And then once you're you're good with that, you know, move on to another one. If you're comfortable with it, there are programs such as Hootsuite and others that you can use that will post to more than one social media at a time. But it still takes um, <clears throat> it still takes monitoring it because if you have messages that come in or any questions that come in, you need to make sure that you have time to respond to to those questions and, and to respond to that. So don't get pressured into thinking you need to be everything in all places. Do one thing first and do it well and then you can add, add in as, as you find maybe your demographic changes or, or your opportunities may change. Maybe you come with a new product or a new service, and that attaches to a different demographic that may um, use a different social media. If you want to use the traditional um, methods, newspaper, radio, television, um, again, all of those are very good. They just really do hit on certain demographics, and they um, can be costly. So make sure that fits within your marketing budget. And I would suggest those are m more effective if you have um, a special event that you want to promote or a special offer, um, or if, if you do want to do things that are just um, kind of top of mind, try to keep your cost as low as you possibly can. I know that um, cable TV tends to be lower um, in price per ad 
maybe than hitting your your um, local new, uh, television during the the news. So you kind of have to say, okay, what what will my budget withstand? What what can the impact be, and what do I want to accomplish? We um, are members of several different chamber of commerce um, location or areas, and we work with all of those different chamber of commerce. And those are important. It helps you stay up on what's going on in the different communities. And um, it, it also uh, lends credibility to your business. But um, you know, it's, it's something just really good when you're in those communities or you know those people that you can, can talk about being a member of the chamber. Grow Nebraska is another organization. And probably you're all members of Grow, but um, it certainly is a great organization for you know, offering things like the trainings that they do, offering support, offering member-to-member um, -member opportunities and things. So um, any of those types of organizations that you can join, it may be a, a peer group or um, an organization within your type of, of entity, but they all have a place in um, helping you get your name out and get the word out about what you do. And it, you know, it's hard for me to believe, but um, we are moving into the holidays. And if you do have things that you do for your clients or your customers for the holidays, um, that takes some planning. It has to fit within your budget. But most things take a little bit of time to put together. So as much as you can think ahead of what are you going to want to do for the holidays, you have something you want to offer to your customers or clients as a thank you? Um, do you have special events through the holidays that you try to attract um, some additional um, you know, customers or clients? A lot of people, the holidays really are you know, a huge portion of their business. So um, what do you have in place that, that you're going to really get the word out on, on what you can do? We do, um, you know, the the calendars, um, all different types of calendars. Um, the magnetic ones are nice. The wall calendars are nice. Um, dashboard calendars are still popular. It depends on um, your industry, and so there's a lot of different things that you can either do do for yourself, um, or you can suggest to your customers. You know, maybe in the case of like Sammy. So um, look and see what all the different opportunities are. But if you do decide that that's, that's the way you want to go, there's just so many things that are available of different sizes and costs and things. Holiday cards are, are still great. As we've seen more of a move toward online things and um, e-newsletters, e-cards, e-this, e-that, um, we don't get as much mail. And people still like to get mail. You like to open your mailbox, and you like to see something besides bills in your mailbox. And so cards are still have an impact. And people like to get those, and they like to hear from you. So if you want to do a holiday card, a Christmas card, um, you know, wishing someone well for the new year, or saying thank you and um, around Thanksgiving time, thanking them for their business through the year or for um, working with you. Uh, you can, um, you know, definitely um, send those out, you know, through your business. You can send them out personally. Um, and there's just a wide variety. It's nice when, when you can personalize them um, so that, uh, you know, again, your brand's on there. It's easily recognizable. People know where that came from. And so there's just all kinds of opportunities to make that as personal or as um, and make the whole process simple. We talked a little bit earlier on about trade shows. And a lot of those will happen starting um, probably November and then going into January, February, March, that, that time frame. And some of those things that that you'll want for your trade show are take, can take a little bit of time to put together. So if you are looking at moving into um, 
being in, in some trade shows, being as prepared for that as you can. That, that just helps the whole process be, be easier. Um, you'll definitely want to have you know, some, some type of banner, whether you do retractable banners, um, how you want to do that kind of depends, again, on your budget and, and how many you're going to be doing and things. But you certainly would want to have plenty of business cards and brochures, any catalogs or um, specials that you might want to run, any giveaways. Uh, you definitely want to have all of that ready, ready to go and um, to keep it as, as easy and less stressful as you possibly can. Um, Tablecloths are a good, a great thing to have. Table runners, something again that is branded, that people look and quickly identify that 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 is um, that that's your company. They know that they've seen that um, before. So um, don't um, don't hesitate to um, you know to look at others that when you're at a trade show maybe or you've you've visited one, kind of see what caught your eye or um, what was uh, what you thought was good and what um, attracted people to to come over and to start visiting and come in all different sizes and shapes um, you know we can do retractable banners as small as nine by twelve um, we have a, a tourist attraction here locally that uses those really small retractable banners um, to put out at the hotels and they will change up the information inside. They'll change up the banner part depending on what event's going on. It's a very low cost way for them to consistently um, get out what's happening now. And, and so um, there's just a number of ways that you can use this type of um, product to reach different people without the cost being outside of your budget. There's so many. So are the retractable. Go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. Just a question. Are the retractable banners um, more or less expensive than like a poster? I mean, I'm sure it depends on how you make them. But I'm just trying to get a feel for. So if you want to have something, uh, what are the trade-offs between these different ones? So you can maybe just as you go through them, can you talk about the cost versus? reusability and some of those different trade-offs between the types? Yeah, sure. You know, we do all different kinds of things for people. Um, some people will just say they want a poster on foam core and that's all they want to do. And those are fine. If you're going to attend a number of trade shows, that's a, that's a pretty low-cost way to, to do that. You want to make sure you have an easel and you have some way to, to stand that up when you get there. But um, because you know you have the curtains generally behind you and around you, and they're not very hard, you know, so hanging things can be a challenge. But um, if you're going to go to very many trade shows, a poster on foam core is eventually going to look like you've gone to a lot of trade shows. And so that's the nice thing about like the retractable banners. They are a little bit more like for that if you're only going to do maybe one. But they're very cost effective anymore, and um, you know you can kind of spend a variety, pay probably from 150 to 400 just for one that's 30 by 72, and that's a, a huge variety of um, you know if you want it double sided or um, maybe you want uh, just kind of a budget one because you know you're going to go to a two three trade shows a year. And that's going to be it. But if you're going to go to a number of them, you probably want um, a, you know, a pretty good, high quality one. So the nice thing is, is what's inside the banner part can always be changed out. And so if you have a new product, or you just need to update your branding, or maybe your location changed, or something then you can just have that new banner put in that retractable cassette and then you're good to go again for the next thing. So whereas with the 
the poster on foam core, you know, you can put another poster over it, but like I said before long, that foam core is not going to be in great shape, and, you know, it's going to get knocked around in your car, and and so those are just some of the, the you know, you can definitely do that. You can do a, a banner with grommets and, you know, and hang it up behind you. It's just some of the trade shows you aren't, you don't know for sure what you're really going to get when you get there um, as far as, as that. So the nice thing about the retractable banners is it doesn't really matter. Um, you can, you know. And can you speak just a little bit about um, types of banners for outdoor shows? Sure. Um, you know, we um, we do double-sided banners. We do reinforced banners. Um, you know, the the thing to always keep in mind is if you're traveling, you're you're going to need to be able to make sure you can um, you have the room for whatever you're going to take. So, um, you know, but there's there are different types of banners for outdoor shows. So. You know that isn't that isn't a problem. We definitely we will we will finish it differently if it's going to be outside, and you know we'll want to know specifically what is your booth going to be like. You know, and so we know how you're planning to um, to tie that down or to hang that or or if you're going to have a stand or you know how you're going to actually be doing that. So there's just different ways to try to accommodate for what weather conditions you might have. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yep. Just trying to get a feel for the options that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you look at, at you know, your promotional items and your giveaways, um, the sky's the limit, really. There are so many things that are available now. It really kind of comes back again to what your budget is and um, who's your demographic, what you're hoping to accomplish with that, making sure that that they're branded consistently, so that um, you know if they pe people keep that, they know exactly who you are, what you do, and um, and how they can reach you to uh, place an order or to call with questions or or anything. So uh, we try to mix it up with our promotional items that we do, giveaways at our trade shows, just to kind of see what people like and um, and and what what they, you know, what kind of, what they like best, I guess. Uh, we probably have the biggest, the best success with little notepads that we make in-house, and people just love them. And, um, and they'll turn around and call us and say, I want to order a bunch of those notepads because I've got a trade show coming up. And... Um, and so those, so it's just again, just finding out what, what people, um, you know, like, and making sure that their, that your information on there is, is very current, and that the customer can easily reach you. Um, are there are there any other questions that, that anyone has or? When we go to uh, work with a printer, what type of turnaround should we plan on before uh, an event or a show? For well, maybe I'm sure it varies depending on the products. It does kind of vary depending on the products, um, but I would say you know I would I would start getting ready a month ahead. Um, I know. You know, events and, and trade shows and things tend to be a little bit stressful anyway because you know you're going to be out of the office and um, there's always last minute things that come up. So, you know, I would I would at least start getting ready a month ahead. Know what you want to get and get started making, you know, getting the setup going on all of your things that you, you want to have. If there's any changes to your business card or your brochure, you know, start working on that. If you don't have a banner, or retractable banner, or any of that, and it needs to all be set up by a designer, um, you know, make sure that you give time to to get that done as well as get the product in, um, through production. Okay. But certainly, we do a lot of last-minute things. Um, you know, and I, I'm sure Sammy can relate to this too, but um, 
you know, people call up, oh, I just realized that next Wednesday, you know, I have to be at this or that. You know, what can I do? Well, generally we can help them find something that, um, you know, we can produce in that amount of time and, you know, will still have an impact for them. But um, the giving a little bit more time just allows the process to not be as stressful. Are there any other questions? I'm just going to say, Judy, would you like to address some of the questions that were submitted by people who aren't able to be on the call? Yeah, that would be great. Awesome. Well, we did have a fellow who wanted you to talk just a little bit more about um, like mailer pieces and how you can make them uh, so that people won't throw them away. <laughs> sure, sure. Right, okay. Um, there's several different ways to do mailings. Um, first of all, you can do an every door direct mailing, which means it's going to go to everyone on a certain carrier route. So you really pick the carrier route. So if you want to hit, say, if you want to hit the southwest part of North Platte, you're going to pick the carrier route um, for that segment of town. Um, if you want to hit um, all of McCook, you know, those are the carrier routes and you do that through um, the, the Postal Service site. They have to be a certain size um, and there's no exception to that. They have to be that size, not even a sixteenth of an inch smaller or larger. Um, but your printer can help you with those types of specifics. Um, that is really going to you, uh, you. You mail those cheaply for the post um, postage cost because um, the printer or the mailing service is going to do all of the work for the post office. They're going to be wrapped in hundreds. They're going to be ready for that carrier. They're going to be in a bag for that carrier. I mean, everything is ready for that carrier. So it goes out less per piece for mailing. Um, so that's one way if you want to. <laughs> to do that type of mailing. Um, you can also purchase a list um, that says, um, you know, at such and such an address, a woman um, age 45 lives there. So you can send it out with a picture that would relate to that woman um, and it would have her name on it. Maybe maybe you're going to say her name two or three times throughout the, the verbiage of the piece. Um, those kinds of things tend to grab attention because someone says, oh, how did they know me? How did they know who I was? Or, um, you know, I had a, a gentleman one time who received a mailer that had a, a guy fishing, and on the T-shirt it had um, a name in the uh, fly fishing shop. And, um, and it happened to be that guy's last name, <laughs> and um, which, of course, the marketing company had done. And so he's like, can you make me those shirts? And, um, and so we did that for his next fly fishing excursion with his friends. But it caught his attention because he saw his name and it related to something that was his hobby. So they had done the marketing on him. You know how when you get online, um, if you look for shoes on Macy's, next time you go to Facebook, that ad's going to be on Facebook. And so... They're the marketing companies who follow that kind of, of um, traffic. So they knew that this gentleman was a fisherman, and he did react to that mailing piece. He may not have bought their product, but he still reacted to the mailing piece. Um, so as targeted as you can get that, um, the better. And you have between two and three seconds for someone to actually look at it and decide if they're going to look at it further. Um, so if it's if it's eye-catching, if it's different, if it has pictures that relate to that person's interest or their age, um, if it has their name in two or three places on it, anything that you can do that way that helps them to hang on to that piece just a few more seconds. Because within 10 seconds, they're going to decide if they're going to keep it or pitch it. So it sounds like not very much time, but if you kind of think, again, of yourself and looking through your mail, how you do that. 
So you want to get as targeted as you possibly can. You want to make sure your piece is um, relevant to who you're sending it to, that the message is clear, that there's a call to action on it, and, um, and then you want to get past that two to three seconds when they'll look at it a little bit longer. Um, but direct mail is still has the highest success rate um, through for for everything. So it's um, again as there's less mailings, each mailing piece then becomes that much more important. Is that Heidi? Do you think that? I answer? think that's great. Um, then we had another question submitted. Uh, are there independent contractors other than like the the post postal service uh, who will distribute materials, like um, put absolutely. up flyers or hand out? And how would you go about finding them? Yeah, well, that's something that we definitely do. We do a lot of mailing. Uh, we handle it from start to finish. Um, and and so and I know there's um, you know other uh, printing businesses that do the same. I know there's some mailing services that that do some of that as well. Um, but yeah, we do handle that from start to finish. So we can help design the piece. We can get the list. Um, we can get all of the data that's needed. We can run it variable data if they want to do a targeted piece, every door direct, whatever. And then we actually do the mailing. We we work with our bulk mail um, center here in North Platte. So. Got it. What about other options like, um, say, they want posters distributed to like downtown businesses? Are there services that would help them get posted there? Um, so, like, maybe they had something special going on and they wanted everyone in the downtown area to get a poster? Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yep. Okay. Well, we do a lot of things um, above and beyond maybe what some others do, so I'm not sure what area that person might be in. Um, we, we will do phone calls. We do a, a lot of different things. So for us, that would be something that we would just, you know, if that – if one of my clients needed that or my customers needed that, we would just provide that service. Um, so otherwise, I'm not sure if there is, um, you know, like a, a company specific to doing those different kinds of things. But Got it. Perfect. All right. Well, are there any other questions? I was going to say thank you. Of the wonderful information. This is this has been awesome. Okay. Um, so, and thank you everybody for attending. We are going to try and wrap up here since it is almost one o'clock. Um, if you have any additional questions, Judy, is it okay if I send them your contact information? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you everyone Perfect. for joining. Yeah. So if you have any uh, follow-up questions, let me know. Um, I'll also be sending you Judy's uh, contact information later today. And one last big thank you to uh, BW Telecom for sponsoring this and keeping it free and open to the public. Well, if you enjoyed this uh, training and you're interested in learning more, we are going to be having another Third Thursday training in November. And this one is going to be featuring Nisha AV. Um, so she is going to be talking, she's with uh, the Department of Economic Development. And she is going to be talking on innovation here in Nebraska. So we are looking forward to that. I'd also uh, like to invite all of you to grow Nebraska's Market Tech Conference, which will be April 26th and 27th of 2016 in Kearney, Nebraska. So mark your calendars now. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And watch for your follow-up email later today. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. That was very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.